right, in this one, we're going to talk about reordering when you hit a certain breakpoint. And the most kind of common use case for something like this is when uh, you have a desktop view and when you're going down to mobile or vice versa and you want to reorder the items that are on the page. So rather than taking them out of the DOM and spinning them back in, we can use the Flexbox order uh, to get up and running. So just a quick uh, little look as to, to what we'll be building here. So got a simple little website here and let's take a look at the HTML first. So I've sort of broken it down into sections, which is generally how uh, your website is going to be. Um, and we're just going to be reordering each of the seconds. So I've just got a wrapper here, which is going to serve as our flex container. Uh, I got a header, which I've just sort of put these backgrounds on each of them. This is the nav from the previous exercise. So uh, all of that code is included in this one, but uh, there's nothing really that you have to, to worry too much about this, although we will, I have added this, which is the little menu button. And when you click that on mobile, it's going to um, show up and down. Uh, we've got hero, which is just like a big photo. So a lot of times websites have these nice big uh, photos here when you load the page. Maybe it's a banner for something, you know. Um, we've got a detail section, which may have some information about your product or your website. We've got a sign up form. And then I've got a... Uh, just a footer here. So all of those sections, great. And this is essentially what it's going to do. Uh, let me just turn the style on the answer. Style-answer.css, refresh this. So when I go down, and I've, I've set this to go down at uh, 500 pixels. So you'll notice that this is just normal. This is how we had it before. But if I bring it on down to close to 500, you'll see what happens is, whoa. Look what happens here. So first of all, our menu goes to the top because more likely than not, you're going to want uh, your menu to be able to open and close something like that. Uh, our header goes below the menu. Then we bring this details and the form box up. So these two above the hero, and then we just let the hero and the footer uh, go at the bottom. So pretty standard little ordering. Um, it's pretty straightforward. I'm just going to show you how to do it. Um, and there is one little gotcha uh, with this menu if you're used to using uh, jQuery toggle because it's it's specific to Flexbox. So uh, let's go ahead. I'm just going to change this back to style.css and we'll head into our style.css. Um, what do we got here? Again, this is just really simple HTML. It's probably, it's not something you're going to take and, and use on a website. Um, I've just appended a bunch of styles to all of the links, but uh, just for simplicity's sake, if we scroll down, scroll down, um, pretty much everything up until here is just styling. So all of that so far is just, just styling, just make sure that our demo doesn't look totally terrible. Uh, right here, this is you'll notice that this is for the flexible nav that we built in the last exercise. So uh, we're keeping that, that's gonna work totally fine. Uh, then we got our, this is for our flexible nav as well with the breakpoint. And then here, the 500 PX, that's where I want uh, everything to go on and sort of kick in. So underneath this, um, what do we really wanna do? So because, all of these sections here, we got a header, a nav, a section, a section, a section, and a footer. Because we want to append an order property to them, you tell me what sort of element does an order property go on. And it, it goes on a flex item, right? So in order to have flex items, like we can't just go ahead and select the header and say display flex item. That's not a thing. Um, in order to make something flex items, we actually need to go ahead and turn the parent, which in this case is the wrapper, which is why I always recommend, uh, even if you're doing like a full bleed website, even if these divs here were just going left to right, you should always wrap your website in some sort of uh, wrapper div, just in case you run into a situation like this. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and say dot wrapper display flex so that will turn our wrapper into a flex container and our uh, immediate children into flex items so uh, now i'm going to refresh you see nothing changes because we got to hit that 500 pixel uh, break point so let's go ahead and hit that and whoa what's happening here is as soon as we hit that 500px break point You'll notice that like everything just kind of 
gets all jumbled up here. And I think this is one of the frustrations with Flexbox is that you just turn it on and then it just breaks your entire website and people go, ah, I, I can't deal with this. It's, it's too much work to, to get it up and running. However, uh, you'll know that by default, the flex direction is what? The flex direction is rows, right? We spent all these videos looking at uh, these columns of content in which that they were lined out in a row. So we want to switch the main axis and the horizontal. We want to swap them. And the way that we do that is we say flex direction column. And give that a refresh. And OK, good. So now it's column and all of our things are laid out uh, in column view. So good. We're kind of back where we were. Uh, and next up, what we want to do is start applying ordering to each of these items. So uh, the first thing I would want to do is uh, do it on our flex nav. So I go ahead and select that it has a class of flex nav on there for it. And if we want that to be first, you might think like, okay, we'll do order one and give it a save and, and refresh. And when we do that, whoa. Where does our nav go? Our nav goes to the bottom of the page. And how come when you say it is one, it goes all the way to the end? So um, this is because by default, the order of all elements is what? It's zero. It's a big fat zero. So what we need to do is put a default order on everything else. And this is kind of like Z index. Um, uh, so what I have been doing is I select every flex item. So that's just a quick little selector of every immediate child of wrapper. And I'm going to just put a little comment here, say flex item. And maybe we'll tell ourselves here, uh, flex container. Okay. And what we'll do with that is we'll put an order. And if I want to be able to say like one, two, three, four, five, without having to worry about everything being order one, you can, do order and just put like a put a high number on there like 9999 and give it a refresh and now you'll notice that so everything is set to a really low number and because they're all the same they're still gonna when the flex order is exactly the same for all of them like if two flex items have the same order what will happen is the order that they show up in the dom or in the html will take precedence so now our order one is working great um, but again, when you get to mobile, you don't want your nav to be open by default. Uh, so we'll take a quick look here. I've got this link with the class of toggle nav, and then we've got this UL that holds all of our links. So we want to go ahead and say dot toggle nav display block. And that should, there we go. And it makes this nice little toggle nav one for us. Uh, and we want to hide the other one. So that's flex nav UL display none. Great. So while we're there, um, if I go ahead and click this, you'll notice that uh, it's not working. And the reason behind that is if we open up our dev tools here and go to elements and just open this up so that we can see this navigation here and go ahead and click it. And you'll notice that there's a class of open being toggled on and off, on and off. Now, why did I do that? If we look at the uh, jQuery just at the bottom here and say, when the link with the class of toggle nav is clicked, then grab the flex nav unordered list and toggle the class of open. So you may be saying like, why don't you just do something like uh, slide toggle, which is kind of cool because you get the animation along with it. Uh, so give that a save and refresh and cool, it works. But the main, the thing here is like, remember our, these guys right here were stacked four in a row. And now that they are just one, two, three, four stack like that. And the reason behind that is because for these ones to stack side by side, and especially like if we're talking about um, this one right here as well, where they stack one, two, one, two, one, two, and then four beside each other for that to actually work on our mobile, when we open it on up, we actually need this UL to be display flex, not display block. And when you use jQuery toggle or slide toggle or something like that, it just changes it from display none to display flex. So uh, unfortunately we can't use slide toggle. We need to toggle our own class of open and I'll go back here. And when it has a class of open, 
can go down into here. We'll say dot flex nav ul dot open. Normally you'd say display block, but in our case we're saying display flex. I give that a save, and it works great. So it just it just pops open and close. There's no animation there. Uh, if you wanted to, you could you could pop some CSS height animations uh, on there, which would allow us to slide it open and close, open and close. And I think that's sort of the better way to do it as well. We're, we're slowly moving away of moving our animations out of things like jQuery and back into CSS. So that's that's it for our nav. We've got that all up and running. Up next, we need to reorder some of our items. So uh, we thought about this. This is one. Uh, we have this one as two. So let's go ahead and do that. So it's just dot top. Why? Because if you look at it, We've got a header with a class of top, so just top is enough for a selector. We will say not flex, order to be able to save. And that's not gonna do anything, but just because uh, we're going to be changing the ones after it, we have to explicitly set it to two. Uh, next up, we want this details here. So this is a section with the class of details and section with the class of sign up. We want those to be three and four. So I can go ahead and say dot details order three and I'll just go ahead and say dot sign up order four. Now give that a save and a refresh and perfect. Looks like we've got everything in order. Nav is still working. We've got our header, we've got our details, we got our content and then we don't have to worry about setting these to be five and six. How come? Because since they already set to 999, they are just going to be appended at the bottom in the order that they show up. So since hero comes first and footer comes next, they are going to show up. That's actually kind of a neat thing to show as well. Like this is the order, just put, put your, your cursor over top of your elements and watch it jump around from top to bottom. So that's mobile reordering, uh, pretty handy, pretty simple, I think. Uh, just make sure that you have your wrapper as a display flex, and then you can go ahead and use the flex ordering property uh, in order to move them around. See you in the next video.